Hello everyone and welcome to the review of the Happy Model Mantis 85. This is a truly uh, ready to fly quadcopter because it does not only come with a receiver and a battery included but for just $150 beside the quadcopter you also get a full blown hobby grade transmitter which you can use also with other models so you can go ahead and uh, build some other quadcopters and still keep this transmitter and use it with all of that so this is a rather good transmitter and it's included in this package only this thing bought separately is around 50 to 60 dollars on uh, the cheapest websites from China so it's a good value because you get the quadcopter and the transmitter included. Only thing missing from this package is a LiPo charger. You do get a battery, but you don't get a charger for it. That's optional. And it's not included in any of the available packages of this Mantis. Of course, if you do not need the transmitter, you can buy it without one and it will be slightly cheaper. Another good thing about it is the fact that besides being ready to fly harder wise, it's also pre-configured and you can see here it's already binded with the receiver and it's also programmed you will have flight modes and arm disarm switch so you actually just need to charge the battery power on the transmitter and you are ready to fly this thing without any kind of configuration you don't have to know better flight you don't have to connect it to a pc it just simply works out of the box and i'm going to try it just like that but first let's take a quick look here so you get a very good manual with a lot of explanations including better flight configuration how to bind your receiver how to set up channels so it's in-depth manual it's very good it shows you different scenarios for different type of receivers even how to configure the OSD on better flight right so in the box you get the quadcopter and let's see what else you get a spare set of propellers, some screws and some rubber bands, the battery which is a happy model battery and this is a two cell battery 400 milliamps the discharge rate is somewhere there it's a 30, 30 C rating so we should see how good that is you also get a spare set of velcro and a small hex key to replace the propellers they have two screws on each propeller right now let's take a closer look at the quadcopter the PV camera is adjustable it has a tilting mechanism here so you can adapt it to your uh, racing style motors of course are brushless and they are 1102 9000 kV the receiver is installed back here and I don't like the fact that the antenna is very close to the propellers and you can always break this there's plenty of space on top of it so you can basically move this on uh, under the top canopy and have it there oh uh, oops there it goes no power wire so this just came off from somewhere under there that's not very, not very nice of them so this means that I have to repair this thing first before I fly it although it was ready to fly uh, moving on uh, this is the video transmitter antenna which is somehow not call it protected but it's sticking at least on top and it has a very strong wire there so it will not bend easily into the propellers and get caught and uh, cut beside that the frame looks very good because beside the carbon frame unibody here it also have a backup aluminium plate if you can see here this green part which goes from arm to arm on this side and the same on this side this of course adds a lot of weight because you can see it's rather thick comparing with the carbon fiber frame but this will add a lot of strength to this quadcopter and i must say that i can uh, compare this with an entry-level quadcopter 
or at least I will say this is more of an entry level brushless mini racing quadcopter and the biggest reason I say that is the fact that this thing only runs on 2S battery so there's no 3S or 4S madness with it only 2S and that will make it a bit sluggish uh, at least that's my feeling about it we'll see I'm going to fly it and uh, see how that uh, stacks about the things I have uh, said of course it also comes with a beeper which is very useful because this thing is tiny and when it will fall into the grass it will activate the beeper and you can find it a lot more easy All right so now let's also take a quick look at the transmitter some of you may know this model and some of you may not there's something else in the box yes we have a manual for the transmitter it's the fly sky fs i6 six channels radio so this is in chinese and on this other side it's in english which is okay what is nice actually about this transmitter is the fact that you can change the firmware on it very easily there are plenty of tutorials on uh, the internet and this thing actually has more than six channels uh, you can go up to 10 channels working channels and there are receivers that only cost something like ten dollars fifteen dollars maybe twenty dollars and they will have at least eight working channels so you can use this in larger aircraft you can program uh, gimbals with it like uh, panning tilting uh, different flight modes or if you fly RC planes you can uh, install flaps and things like that and you can all control them with this transmitter which is very nice and this thing can go up to about 10 uh, 2 kilometers in range without any kind of modifications only to use a proper receiver with it last but not least this also comes with a backlight and it also supports telemetry if you use better receivers you can get voltage indicator uh, on the screen and you know the quadcopter's battery level on your transmitter just like you can do with more expensive transmitters or radio sets that are out there. And now the small mantis is working as you can see we have FPV video it's very sharp it's looking very good as you can see and with the provided transmitter I'm going to test the arm switch and it's now armed and I get the artificial horizon working I also have voltage indication here so the OSD is uh, configured and then I can switch modes this is stabilized mode this is acro mode and of course air mode which is not to be used indoor and on the table at least all the quadcopter stable and be sure not to touch any of the propellers and this is air mode and works as it should of course it automatically enables the small beeper here when uh, you shut down the remote controller or you disarm and that is to find your quadcopter in case you are going to lose it somewhere right so this was the bench part of uh, this review as you can see it wasn't perfect out of the box but it was a quick fix and now let's take it for a flight and here we are with the mantis outdoor and let's uh, do a quick flight test to see how this thing works uh, I'm not going to fly it FPV for now I'm just going to fly it line of sight because 
I need to get the feeling of its control to see if it's working properly so I don't want any kind of surprises just a short regular line of sight test flight so I'm going to power on the provided transmitter here I'm going to connect the battery and I think that it may be better to leave it in the ground even though the propellers will hit on the grass because this thing is so tiny but it do it does have some space to spin them let's see I'm going to switch it to stabilized mode which is the middle switch here pre-programmed and I'm going to arm it let's see will the motors work yes and when it's armed the motors will not idle spin and if you leave it with the throttle down it will enter in find mode and it will beep in case you get this somewhere in the grass and you cannot see it so let's take it up into the air let's see how this thing performs oh, it's a tiny flying mantis Well, this thing is funny, but I am kind of using 50% for it to stay in the air, so that's a lot of throttle. I'm going to try a punch test now when the battery is full. And it already triggered the low battery beeper. Let's try that again. So that's not very nice I think that the provided battery is poor in quality it doesn't have a real discharge rate that is indicated on it so this thing kind of lacks power but it's understandable it's only on 2s but the battery simply may be too weak but a good thing about it being not so fast is that you can actually learn to fly this if you are a beginner with the provided camera you can try to pilot it a bit line of sight then switch to FPV and learn to fly it and with the lack of speed you are having a lot of forgiveness from it but I don't like the fact that you need more than 50% throttle just to keep it afloat okay not afloat because it's not a boat but in the air so it needs a lot of throttle a lot of throttle just to make it fly worthy it's also fighting a bit of wind I kind of like the noise that it's making it's not that highly pitched I also do like the fact that it's very stable as you have seen it's as stable as a kind of normal quadcopter it's not like a crazy racer and it's rather well tuned I don't see any kind of vibration or see wobbling which is a good thing so that means that the controller it's rather well tuned by the producer I think that I'm going to give it another punch just to see how it goes with a punch now but that will probably kill the battery so let's try it and there it goes it beeps again but it did that from the start I just wanted to see if it still has the punch after a period of flight which it still does but as expected a punch on just a 2S battery. 
and there it goes quickly beeping and that's the battery which is almost over so I'm going to land it I don't want to kill it on the first flight and now it has auto activated the find me beeper and that's a very nice feature because if you are a beginner and don't know about much about setting it up this is very useful for finding it in the grass if you lose it uh, it may greatly improve your chances of uh, getting it back so I'm going to disarm it and now I can disconnect the battery and the transmitter so this was it the quick test flight so it flies nicely the battery is crap it needs a lot of power to get off so this thing is probably also too heavy for the motors or something like that I may get along with that but the flight time is short and uh, when you give it a bit of punch it will just go to low on voltage so I'm going to try to search for a better battery and try that again to see if it's a battery problem or if the quadcopter is rather unpowered but as I've said I can live with that but I want a bit more flight time with it one minute more or something like that because it's too short for now so be sure to follow my next uploads I'm going to fly this FPV I'm going to try other batteries on it so this should be interesting until then bye bye